He's got a uh, PD keys to access the radio and stuff for when um huh? they need to use the radio to deploy equipment. I think Kyle Pred gave it to him. He's on the radio right now. He wants to clarify. Oh, yeah. You want you can come over. I'm I'm sure you're I mean you're high command just the same as I. If you wanted to hear him out. Uh, oh, sure. I'll, I'll be up there in a minute. All right. <laughs> in a minute. Bye bye. I was uh, worried about, you know, my safety. So I retreated back towards Sergeant Gray. Uh, at that point, several other pull, officers I'm showed up. up and, uh, and it appeared friends, that the but, uh, other individuals with, on the mopeds were trying to load up Mr. At the bottom Sulfur on above one of those the mopeds. Dispatches. However, the other officers uh, uh, prevented that from happening. Yeah, I don't, was I'm going to go look into what that. The I gathered yeah. uh, evidence from the alleyway. Yeah. And that was, that's the end of my test. Why did Pred give... Bucky, how long has Pred known about this? That's a really good question, Dad. Why do I eat legs? Why do you eat um, legs? I don't know, actually, why... What the fuck? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, me too. I thought the car would be blown up or beaten to smithereens or stolen. I'm very impressed with Los Santos right now. All right, I think we're going to dig into this Aegis conspiracy theory a bit more. Bucky ever had a like a record? This is probably not the way to do it. Ever been expunged? Yes, he has. Not for a long time though, to be fair to him. He has been expunged since when was that? I didn't see it. For uh, over a year. So we did have some charges at some point. Like Bucky's army, it's pretty cool. No one can deny it's pretty cool. I think me and Owen were on the same page. Dark and Owen, sorry. Uh, the noose is pretty. It's kind of come out of the blue a little bit with the war. And just has all this private military equipment. I get like, oh, we'll see. I understand why we might need it. I get that. In character, it's sussy as fuck. Yeah. Oops. Yep, 
I can't get in. Yeah. You... Uh, hello. Hey, yeah, we're. Uh, someone's coming over to let you in. You're gonna be real happy to see him. Oh, okay. It's yeah, my keys to him. Huh? Yeah, it's Brian. He's coming to let you in. See you Fantastic. <laughs> what are the fucking chances, dude? Should be good. Thanks, Brian. So sussy. God, Brian's really going full CIA, huh? Place is sus as fuck. Where the hell are they? No. Oh. Hey, Mr. Bones. Hello. Nice, nice place. Nice place you got here. <clears throat> Thank you. Who's the uh, American football team coach? They just ran off. Who's that? That's Brian. Oh, that was Brian. Yeah, he let you in, didn't he? Oh, I did. Yeah, I, I didn't know his yeah, outfit. Yeah, Brian Knight. <clears throat> he's uh, he's running for Senate. Uh, he said voting's around the corner. So, um, well, <laughs> what's 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 the proposal? National Office of Security Enforcement, a uh, break the glass in case of emergency unit that uh, supplies the PD with uh, equipment uh, designed to deal with uh, threats to national security. Okay. So I mean, uh, to, let, me, to, let me to put uh, it simply, they they want to be the facilitators for heavy equipment for PD. They PD command or high command, or whatever authorizes, you know, like a SAM turret for the Russian jet situations, and then they can get it out for us. That's their thing. Okay, that, that, that sounds useful. Sure, yeah. Okay, well, Bucky, where did you where did you guys get the equipment from? Uh, I've had my toes in the uh, military industrial complex for some time. Okay, so this is like a like a private military contractors type of thing. <clears throat> uh, no, we are going to be operating under Aegis. We purchased it from private contractors, however. Oh, I see. And you've got like 
paperwork that says you can own this stuff. Well, it's not actually all the illegal. DMV paperwork, and uh, you can check our chairman, uh, Tim Collins' profile. He legally owns all of the SAM sites. Believe it or not, it's not actually illegal in Los Santos to own a SAM site, <laughs> SAM turret, a garden, giant fuck off truck. Please don't tell any of the gangs that. We don't need them to know. <laughs> all right, I won't tell them that. <laughs> Okay. Um, you could own a howitzer, a tank, whatever. All right. It was uh, it was Noose that supplied the PD with um, with that equipment that you guys used on the invasion of Sanguine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got the what is that? The fourteen million dollar bill. Uh, that was paid for by federal tax dollars. Oh, no, it oh. wasn't. They're, they're billing yeah. us for that. Yeah, they, we, the mayor's office received a bill. Oh, well, then that's the Federal Reserve asking for that. Why does the Federal Reserve need I'm our money? I'm pretty sure it was sober. That the, Just they print it. Bill. Um, I have sent files. We have a contract with the PD to give air-to-air -air missiles to the PD. We've done this for the past six to nine months. And... Oh, it's the we, missiles. Oh, it's that's the a, missiles. That's a... That's, that's, oh, that's you that guys talking to a million-dollar missile and the 18 Russian MiGs. <sighs> it doesn't go through ages. It goes through CIA, Service Interest Armors, Armory, and we have a contract with <sighs> the PD. So you got us there. That's a contract between you guys and a private company. That has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it sounds like we fired 18 or 14 missiles at those eight Russian MiGs, and <laughs> that's where the money go. That's where all the money went. But as for the equipment, like the uh, the tanks, the the helicopters, is there like a war discount we could get? Because you know, like I said, that that stuff is paid for. By eight the Russian tanks. MiGs showed up. Maybe we could get like a save the city from eight Russian MiG type. Discounts. <laughs> that's between you and Cerberus Industries Armory. I don't, I, I I thought, don't work for Cerberus. I thought Summers did. That's why I was talking to her. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. No. Um, however, we still have not been paid, and uh, I already have received another order for another 15 missiles, and the PD only has five left. So um, I was told to talk to Molten um, yeah. since yeah. Shelby has been fired. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I can talk to you, Doc, or... Uh, well, you... I mean, Malton works for us, so... But he does he does work with the budget individually, so... Unless he's, he like, he's not blanking you or nothing, is he? If that's I've what you want. i call him multiple times. Wait, okay, if you can't get in contact with him, get in contact with either Willie Glory or Jenny Hall. Those three should be able to handle all budget-related issues. <clears throat> okay. If not, if that doesn't go well, then, they, yeah, come talk to me. Also, I don't see how um, the budget is an issue at all. I worked in the mayor's office. The PD requests budgets from the mayor's office, who has a lot of money in the state account. And um, this equipment is not just for the PD, it's for the state in case of emergency. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that the money should be an issue. I think we should have no problems paying you. So uh, at least more of a scheduling kind of thing. But I I'll get it sorted, don't worry. Right. So just to and clarify, the, the 14 million is not for any of the equipment we received on the invasion day? It's no. For it's for I the think. missiles. Sorry. The no, missiles yeah. take an insane amount of materials. No other person in the city would be able to source the materials for the missiles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty strong case in point for this little SAM turret, because how much do those missiles cost? We pay for those out of pocket. How much are we, are we obligated to reimburse you? And how much are we talking? Because I'm thinking budget alone. If we're, we, we just spent 14 million on missiles and we're supposed to send another 15 million. If we're spending $30 million a month on missiles, like, good Lord, can we afford not to work with Noose? We're going to be bankrupt. I don't think we even have 30 million, period. <laughs> I, I just thought that money wasn't an issue. Now it is an issue. 
I mean, maybe the maybe the mayor's office has money, but the our PD office, budget is like about the five or you, six million. You get your money from the mayor's office. Right, right. I'm, I'm not, I don't know how much money the mayor's office has because I don't work at the mayor's office. I'm saying we as Between a police 400 department. Between 400 and 600 million. Okay, I don't work with the mayor's office, so I don't know. I'm just saying <laughs> PD, our budget is like five to six million a month total. That's that's what I'm that's what that's my frame of reference. That's all I got. So maybe the mayor's office will just eat it. But last I heard they were complaining to us, so I don't know. <laughs> well, war doesn't break out every other day, does it? Um no, but the Russian MiGs do, it seems, more and more, so... And that's why we have air-to-air -air missiles that it gets provided every other week. Because How many the Russians missiles are do we get every threat. week? Bi-weekly, <laughs> bi bi-weekly to monthly, you get 15 missiles. Well, we have to pay for those, right? Correct. That's the, the paying part's the problem, not the supplying part. Like, we, there's definitely enough missiles to handle the jet issue. It's just, I think now it's just... A, it's, it's kind of an issue of like, can we afford them? And hopefully the mayor's office just eats the you cost. You can. Well, no, no, no. The mayor's office might be able to. We cannot, I suppose. But it's just such a fear, dude. Am I misunderstanding where the money comes from? I don't think so. I think we're on the same page. Uh, all I'm saying is, <laughs> I speak for the police such department. It's a non-issue. County Sheriff's Office and the UPD. And I know our budget is five to six million, maybe eight on a good month. I don't know what the mayor's office budget is, and I don't know what they're willing to pay. All I'm saying is, if we're expected to pay for the missiles, we cannot. If they're willing to pay for it, that's great. But last I heard, they were complaining to us about it. So The missiles have been paid for every single time. What's the issue right now? I, 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 don't, I don't know. The mayor's office is complaining about them. That's last I heard. And I guess then that would be a sit down between um, myself, the mayor's office, and the person who takes care of the budgets. Molten. That's right. Okay. Well, um, this is then a separate issue from what's happening here. I'll step away then. All right. Well, that brings us into, uh, I guess, money here, uh, James. Uh, what's the. What's the. The po how much are you going to empty your pockets for these Samsung? Well, we're not a private organization. We are uh, we are under ages. We are part of the uh, we're part of the the state. So uh, you wouldn't be paying us for it. I'm sorry, we would or wouldn't? So we wouldn't uh, be buying you. Would not. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. I love hearing that. I mean, However, don't, I don't expect mean they... don't expect us to. Uh... Let me put it like this: the air-to-air -air missiles are much more efficient because the the SAM site's range is only so far, and you need to wait for the aircraft to come into range at the SAM site. Oh, yeah, the surface-to-air missiles. Yeah, surface-to-air uh, mm -hmm. are much shorter range. What do you usually tow those with? We had some. Interesting complications last time we tried with uh, yeah, so it's the a late axle thing. justice. Uh, there's very specific vehicles that have tow hitches that uh, hook up to the back of it. Yeah, we used the bison, but it seemed like the hitch was a little bit low and it was not loving the situation, but I guess it ended up working long enough. So, yeah, the bison has one. Another one is a bobcat. That's like a, a lower uh, truck, etc., mm -hmm. uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Is it the two we know of? Uh, there's a few others, but not the ones that are red leaf. I see. You know, I, I, far, far be it for me to give you career advice at this junction, but you should really demand some kind of like a reimbursement for at least the asset fees, if not a paycheck, you know? <sighs> it's been a headache just getting this set up and running and trying to get the PD on board, so... I'm probably gonna. I mean, you heard how frugal the the mayor's office is being with. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So what's what's I, in this for for you, Mr. Mr. Bones? 
I have to ask, and what's in it for for noose? What's in it for me? Yeah. The safety and security of our nation. Oh. Very patriotic answer, fair enough. <clears throat> you don't you you just get straight reimbursed by the government, by the state? You know, like uh you know. no, Aegis is unable to accept state money. Oh, right. Okay. Is that why you can't get the missile money straight from the mayor's office? The missile thing is nothing to do with news. Oh, nothing to do with you? Oh, great. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> that's a separate issue between you guys and a private company. And it, a news is not a private company. It's just a, what, a subsection of Aegis? <clears throat> Correct. Okay. And was it the Aegis board that authorized news? Correct. Okay. And was it? And who who was it that contacted news for all the equipment on the invasion day? Was that the PD? It was the PD. Was it? Was it Axel Justice? It was Connor Stubble and uh, Brian Knight. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, um, so just so we can pass the information on, uh, so it's you can supply us with equipment for free. All we have to do is is call. I should hope so. Hmm. I mean, it just seems like upside after upside, and no, we don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> And we get equipment we didn't formally have access to. And you guys won't even come on duty and try to be cops? That sounds great. Well, I mean, I, I if I could ask for something in return, uh, it's to keep my PD keys as uh, being on radio and communicating uh, deployment when things are going down. It makes things a lot less of a headache. Uh, I agree I with that. There, I understand but... that there. I I act entirely. I understand that it is a privilege, not a right. I am, I treat it with respect. I do not have access to the MDW. It is merely just access to radio channels during times of need. Now listen, this is the kind of thing that Axel Justice would never say, because it's just you know, it's not polite and it really kind of like bogs down the conversation. But I feel, as a responsible adult, I have to say it, regardless of whether I think you're going to do it or not. I think if you're going to keep your keys, which, from what you said, sounds like you're going to be a responsible guy with them. I got no problem with that. You can't go on duty. You can't take up police cars. You can't grab stuff out of our armory without authorization. And you can't do any of this without talking to at least someone in PD to know you're on radio. It has to be about the equipment usage. I, I'm suspecting this is all stuff you were probably already planning on. That's but like I said, I've this is the kind of thing that, that Axel way. wouldn't say, but I have to, because people in the past, <laughs> not you, have abused Axel's goodwill and uh, kept their keys and just started signing on duty and buying guns and stuff. So I got to say it. I've already been acting in that capacity for well over a year now. Well, fair enough, but I'd be remiss not to mention it anyway. Uh, no, I sometimes understand. People, you cover your if you don't say it, they'll do it. Yeah, I'm not the way the way I see it is I only have keys to like the general exterior of the building. I don't have keys to the armory. I don't have keys to meeting rooms. I don't have keys to offices. Uh, I don't have access uh, login credentials to the MDW. None of that stuff. I was never given that stuff. I was perfect when I received it. I was only given keys for I was only given uh, basically the encryption frequency for the radio channels and exterior keys to uh, the buildings. Perfect. And if you ever were to betray our trust, you would be sent to jail. But yes. now that I've said the <laughs> unpleasant part out loud, we're in agreement. I'll shut up about that. Dark, do you have any questions for him? Um, I don't think you have any answers. I don't think the right post with the answers I have questions for. Um... Listen, this is me speaking personally, not on behalf of High Command. This is a Richard Dark speaking here. Uh, obviously, Aegis 
began as a uh, you know, I think this has been said uh, many a time now. It started to look over storefronts, and now there's a subsection of Aegis with heavy military equipment that's willing to supply it to the PD. Um, there's, to me, there's a bit of a jump there that I, I don't think you can answer how we got there, and I just need to ask the questions to the right people just to make sure everything's above board, and I hope you understand. <clears throat> I understand. Um, that actually brings us full circle back to what I was discussing with Owen before you arrived, which is legislation. Oh, right, because there, there isn't any right now. <laughs> Correct. Under the current legislation, uh, doing this isn't necessarily illegal, but it's sort of a gray area. It's just not explicitly legal. Yeah. So, and right. for uh, me, I don't really care. I mean... You know, it's one of those things where just having the law involved would, I think, make things all together more difficult. And uh, I already don't really trust the DOJ, and that's something that me and Dark can get into later. But uh, getting legislation, <laughs> I think, only serves to make this more complicated. But if it makes the rest of High Command more happy, then let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I think... Uh... You know, I think what we'll say is we won't make anything concrete right here and there. We won't shake hands or anything, but uh, we'll, we'll take this away, your proposal and stuff, and we'll have a chat to the rest of High Command and anybody else we need to talk to, and we'll get back to you as, as soon as we can. Okay, <laughs> and I, I want to make it very clear, if you have any questions at all, please do reach out. Yeah, we will, for sure. All righty. <laughs> all right, well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bond. I need a place to sign off duty. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah. I'll give you a ride back to Thank you. the sheriff's station. You want to meet there, Dark? You want to talk or anything? I yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll meet there afterwards, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, are you not on the, the board or anything for Aegis? I am not on the board, no. Okay. Yeah, fuck. We got to talk to Aegis about replacing Brian on that board. Yeah, we do. He's one of the um, PD is... designated task force members that doesn't work for the PD anymore. Oh, I see some fun me. battles here on this rooftop. Remember those? Dark? Yeah, yeah. Way too many. Yep. Oh, hey, buggy about that. We see. We used to see a little buzzard on top of here sometimes. You still got that? <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, not. However, we ah. are looking to acquire a helicopter, as we do have a helicopter parking space here. No yeah, HPC's been asking for that little buzzard for. Probably four months. <laughs> oh, um, one more thing. <clears throat> Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the gates at the front say, uh, trespassing, no trespassing, government facility. It's up to you guys, but I'd be completely comfortable with letting you guys charge people with felony trespassing for coming in here. The gates do lock now. If it's an Aegis slash government facility and, uh, the gates say so, then yeah, we should definitely charge people yeah. for felony. I'm going to climb in from the passenger side because that's just what I feel like doing right now. All right. <laughs> This isn't cool up here, but I think Doc's 100% going to question it. Because it is, it is sus. And, yeah, like, I got no problem with anything, but like I said, it's not just my decision to make. And we called it, we called it like months ago when this Aegis legislation was put in. How it's basically just like, yeah, they can pretty much do whatever they want if they wanted to. Like, it was such a fucking... It was such a smart thing for, like, Lang's term as mayor. It's such a... Like, no other mayor has, like, actually thought of how can I keep a grasp on the city when I'm not in power anymore? 
and it was like such a perfect little little thing like look at where Aegis ended up they ended up on the <laughs> on the leviathan for nego for war negotiations like how fucking crazy is that Yeah, Aegis and PD are kind of like level. From the way it's kind of written and the way it's kind of executed, Aegis is very much uh, like in, in the way that the PD is a branch of the government, like a subsection of the government, so is Aegis. Like it's almost, you know, it's a, like it's a mix between a lot of different things. Like there's elements of like FBI and Homeland Security now and then just like the TSA not TSA what's it called I don't know I mean yeah TSA kind of when they were doing like imports and exports stuff Yeah, that's the that's the thing dark I, I, like owen stirring the pot a little bit there with eve i don't know whether owen actually knows whether there's been any issues with the mayor's office and money for the, the missiles so dark didn't pipe up because he didn't know what owen was doing there um but essentially like what eve was saying was if the mayor's office can pay it why can't the pd pay it but then if that question's being brought up and eve's like the missiles are for the state then why is the pd having to buy them like why don't we just cut the corner here and why doesn't the state just buy the missiles and pd just requests them from the state like it's very i don't know it's very like is that a loophole or like because uh, bucky was like I just can't receive money from the state or something. I don't know. I think it's honestly the missiles are just a way for Cerberus to make money. But she was also saying that missiles come from the CIA, the Cerberus, something armory. So I think that's more of a business thing than an Aegis thing. So I think it is just money. And PD signed the contract, yeah. Aegis has nothing to do with Cerberus, yeah. Yeah, that is true, Wink. Right. There's just def there's just a lot of overlap. Yeah, I don't think that the money, like for dark, it's like the money, the money, the missiles is not an issue. I don't think we're ever going to have issues. We're getting that money from the mayor's office. If we do, spicy RP incoming. And you can imagine the room with lovesick, snow, uh, I mean, even dark and Svensson and stubble. Everyone would just be like, why the fuck aren't you giving us money to blow mix out of the sky? But I don't think that's going to happen. Juno? Why are they talking about Juno? What the fuck? Uh, all right. Fucking dark. So you can let yourself out. You have any problems or questions for us? Where you go? No problem. See you later. Hello. Huh? What? You get a haircut? Yeah, I dressed up as a kid. You wanna go upstairs? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Got a whole office here and shit. Like, wait, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Mine's blown up right now. I heard. I it's not even mine. Yeah, that's a shame y'all don't even have Bobby Smith or Davis. I know. Yeah, sorry. Right. It makes you feel any better. We don't got Polito no more. You see that video? What video? The 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 manifesto type thing that was oh, barely. Yeah, I saw that. With Bojack Horseman. I don't know what I was watching. The furries, as I call them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people at the meeting today, at the pizza party up here, were asking about. Yeah. Why don't we go through LSB and release our news? And I had to explain to them, Jesus Christ, there's people on the fucking roof next to us. Um, well, that's all right. Oh. Um, just didn't expect that is all. Um, I had to explain to them that 
I don't really, really want to work with a uh, news organization that is releasing terrorist manifestos without even contact in the comments the PD. Yeah. or that it would, I mean, you know, if these people are, if these people are bombing stuff for the attention, then giving them the attention, I think we should, we should charge her for, as an accomplice, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. These people, I, slippery slope if we do that, but I, I listen, I understand. Yeah. yeah she's assisting she's, them. I'm obviously she, not going to yes. charge her. I'm just saying. It's, it's irresponsible is what it is. It's irresponsible. Like I'm not, and... It is. I'm not against her, like, releasing that, uh, but I'm against her. Like, she could just give us a call and say, hey, listen, I've just received this and sends it over from these terrorists. Uh, I thought you should see this. Um, listen, I'll give you, like, 30 minutes to get on this, and then I'm going to upload it or whatever. You know what I mean? Just a or bit she of could just say... Yeah, I mean, she... Uh... <sighs> yeah, and then she could also... At the very minimum, I mean, this is even like, this isn't even like a terrorism thing. It's like a journalistic integrity thing. Ryan yeah. Knight is making claims after he quits about the PD and he doesn't reach out for comment. She doesn't reach out for comment at all. Even though I gave her a statement two days ago, like, oh, I'm sorry about that. I was. It's all right. My bad. I'm just um, standing here. Yeah. <laughs> in any case, um, not reaching out for comment is kind of concerning, but. Oh, you're still in handcuffs. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm okay. I was just sitting like this the whole time. Oh, no, and just okay. Fine. You just, okay. <laughs> just. <laughs> Good save. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so what's your, uh, might have to go outside the office for this. You know, I trust dispatchers. I do, but I don't know who's below us. Um, oh, so, the wall's not very thick here. Historically, no. And uh, as much as I'd like to believe that People would have the good nature not to, you know, hear stuff they shouldn't. Sometimes they do, and then it's kind of hard to take back. So, what do you want to do? Dispatch, can you hear me? Yeah. Dispatch. No, she's she, she's not listening. All right. Well, you know, situation is like an hour and a half. Well, is it like an hour? It's like a fifty minutes now. Um, there's a whole conversation we have to have about divine and stuff and uh i don't know how caught up you are what's the last thing you heard uh the last thing i heard was it was when brian got unsuspended for that i guess when he was in custody um mm -hmm. and then the last thing i heard was that he was he was sent in i, I might be misremembering yeah. no he's in jail right now yeah well um i'll do my best to explain the train of logic. Um, Divine essentially committed the PBSO bombing, and we're almost a hundred percent sure on that. So we're going to hold him. Uh, we believe he committed that. So we're going to charge him for it and uh, put him in jail for it. the The problem was that the night of there was the riot, obviously, and so there was a crisis mm -hmm. of what do we do with him? Because we can't. Can we put him in prison or? We put him in Parsons or somewhere else, maybe in the holding cells indefinitely. And, uh, well, I'm glad he wasn't in the holding cells because he'd be bombed too. But for obvious reasons, we can't keep someone in the holding cells for a hold until trial charge. Yeah. I mean, every tsunami would be a huge fucking problem. And every time you process someone, he'd be there taking up a cell. It's just not feasible. And then also we'd have to have someone with them. We can't just leave a guy on their own for 12 hours. He'd starve to death. So we'd have to have people bring him food and stuff. For, for reasons that I really shouldn't have to say out loud, but I think I need to just to clear the air. Um, we can't leave him in the holding cells indefinitely as much as I wanted to, um, as much as I thought that was the safer move. Um, Parsons is off limits because we have we have cops recovering from PTSD there in the war. Um, we can't put a violent offender who's part of the bombings in there, no matter how I feel about him personally. And I'm pretty sure Parsons has a no violence policy as well. So... I don't think he would have been allowed it in the first place. So the end, there's really no option. We had to put him in prison. He's guilty of a crime. He's being held until trial. We have no other place to hold him. We could maybe do a safe house, but then the same issue arises with who monitors him. How do we keep him safe? How do we keep him guarded? How do we know he won't attack the guard? How do we guarantee a guard's there for 12 hours a day? It's just impossible. Um, so we had to go to prison. So he's in prison at the time, or as of right now. He's in there. Um, and now here's the uh, the confidential part. All of what I said so far is pretty much public knowledge. Um, 
he has a bomb in his head. And we believe that someone under Jaeger's orders has the bomb, probably not Jaeger himself because he's in prison, and that Divine has to do stuff for Jaeger or his head explodes. And today's conversation is going to be that they want to hammer out a deal for Divine. Because he's not going to be in jail forever. Probably not even 30 days. Um, The detectives on the case don't think he'll be in jail for more than 12 years, maybe 18 at the most, for the terrorism stuff. So he will be on the street eventually. And he will be under Jaeger's orders again eventually. The bomb in his head is not operation. It's not operable, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, it obviously works, but we can't operate on it. I think we've ruled that out. Me and Tessa. There's no way for us to help him. Right. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but it's a last resort because we have to believe that there's tamper protections or something else. I mean, what kind of an amateur would plant a bomb in someone's head and just allow it to get removed? No problem. We have to. We have to assume that. If we send a surgeon after that bomb in his head, there's a 90% chance it goes off and takes the surgeon's hands or whatever else with him. Um, in any case, so Jaeger's threatening to go public about the bomb in his head to try to leverage public pressure to make us let him out earlier with a deal. I have feelings on that. Um, I don't really know how that works in Jaeger's favor. Um, why would the people of Los Santos, as crazy as they are, want someone with a bomb in their head on the loose bombing stuff? But nonetheless, if there is a likely chance that they're going to use public pressure against us once again. It's nothing new. They've been doing that for the past 10, 15, 14 days since the actual war itself. But that's basically it. That's, the, uh, that's where we're at. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, that's that's a lot. Yeah. Oh, and uh, this is... You might want to sit down for this one. But uh, I was talking to the detective who's uh, on kind of the front lines of a lot of this stuff. And she think, she's hearing rumblings from the DOJ that they don't... Take this with a huge grain of salt because I haven't spoken to the DOJ personally. And I don't know where they're at on this. But the DOJ is apparently threatening to not press charge to not allow charges to be pressed for the Axel Justice murder in prison because it happened in prison. And I want to speak to Crane at the very minimum before I before I get too mad about that. But that's that's what I'm hearing. Okay, that call be true Mm -hmm. the 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 president that was we would have people taking a hostage into prison just to murder them so that they could get away with it you know that's not exactly what my response was but it's pretty close my response was more along the lines of i will kidnap crane himself and kill him in prison and take the kidnapping charge just to prove a point if that goes down what like i said I want to talk to Crane before I, you know, I talk to the public about this. I'm telling you because you deserve to know, but I'm not telling any of my subordinates right. or any of the public no, yeah. until I confirm with Crane. No, that's, yeah, that would be, that wouldn't be good to pass around. That'd be pretty bad. I mean, that would also, I don't know if you saw my email, but I, I, I have emailed the Senate to, to ask them some questions about what happened that day with Pred. Um, but obviously, if, if that happened... Uh, with what well, you're yeah. saying, that would it, it would absolve the senator. Yep. <laughs> well, good news is, well, here's the complicated news. I know we agreed to arrest the senator, or at least approach him about the arrest. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna do anything with that. Yeah. I'm still on board to approach him civilly. I think he's a reasonable guy, and he may be mad, but he's not gonna lash out at us if we just explain ourselves in a professional manner and just say, "Hey, we think you broke the law. What do we do about this?" And either he'll, you know, I I think one of three things will happen. One, he'll fire us all on the spot for our insubordination of bringing it up. Two, he'll absolve himself of all crimes through his infinite power of the the laws. 
And three, he'll understand why we're doing and either serve his time in the holding cells or give himself parole or something that something, something we can, some happy medium to resolve this. In any case, my problem is if the DOJ is basically seditious in terms of two or three judges speaking openly about their hate for the Senate, and now we have a possibility that they won't even be charging people for actual murder, then we're going to need the Senator and we can't really afford to make an enemy out of him. There is other like, senators. But when's the last time you got in contact with them? Yeah. Well, to be fair, I haven't tried, but you are right. The only senator I've seen the past six or 12 months is, is Davis. But... Pumbig. Sorry? He goes by Pumbig. It's like he a goes nickname. A Pumbig? Yeah. Okay. So... You yeah, don't have to but... call him. It's just a little nickname. That's what I call him. He, he likes that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, but then I'd be concerned of, you know, are we, uh, do we excuse someone's crimes just to, to keep them on our side? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, I, I understand the, the idea behind it. I don't know how, I don't know whether I, you know, I like, like doing that. Well, we have 60 days to press charges, right? No, yeah. We don't I, have to excuse him. We could simply just delay charging him because... We really can't afford to make an enemy out of somebody, especially if the alternative is to allow DOJ to then allow 30 plus murderers to get away with literal. I mean, I don't know how to describe this, but an ISIS style execution video, you know, like I, there's definitely a greater evil here and the greater evil is not the Senator to me right now. Right. Yeah. That, that does make sense. Um, I don't know whether you saw, but, but Grayson did hold a, a town hall last night. It was on the news um, in which the mayor did state that she was amenable to... Hold on, I'll get the quote. The mayor was amenable towards di dissolving the Senate and invited the public to reach out with ideas on how to go about that. So I don't know what that's going to mean uh, for I think at least one of us needs to, to talk to the mayor about that because I'm sure I don't know whether she would just make a statement like that without, you know, I guess having thought it through first. Um, she's I don't got to have a with that kind of statement. No, but I mean, like, I think us touching base with the mayor about what she thinks about everything is probably a good idea, too. We could touch base with her and see where she's at. The... The complicated part with getting rid of the Senate is that power may not just settle between us and the DOJ evenly. And if the DOJ, again, is thinking about doing something as, as unconsciousable as allowing murders to go free because it occurred within the, the walls of Bolingbroke for some reason, then we're going to need the senator's power to force them to do otherwise. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Because if the senator were dissolved, I guarantee you we wouldn't have unilateral permission to force the DOJ's hand on anything. Hmm. It's not exactly an easy situation. I mean, the, the most hopeful outcome is that it's not true and the DOJ isn't considering not charging them, but... Right. That's, that's the best outcome, but... I mean, hopefully it's just workplace gossip that you know, people dooming and spiraling and not being reasonable. But my fear is that it's based on a kernel of truth, which is that at least one of the judges is like, well, precedent says that we don't charge people for crimes committed in prison. But anyway, I'm going to email Crane about that and see where he's at, because I'm hoping it's just a rogue judge who said it or a miscommunication entirely. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Um, so with the divine thing, I guess what's the so what's the plan with him? Obviously, he's in for uh, terrorism right now. 
I don't know. I feel we got like there's really nothing we can do to help the guy. The way that it was described to me is that either we we try to hold him as long as we can, which may piss off the vine, and he may. How do I say this? No matter what happens, he's getting out of prison eventually, right? Yeah. He's not... There's nothing we can do about that. So there's two outcomes. One is that we try to hold him as long as we can in prison. And at the end of it, he's soured and also doesn't like us. And they don't even need the bomb in his head to, have, to force him to do anything anymore. And he's another enemy we've made. The other outcome is we try to negotiate some kind of deal and retain at least a little bit of goodwill and hope that when he's forced to bomb stuff or attack stuff, he pulls a punch or two because he plants a bomb. I mean, I mean, think about the Polito bombing for God's sake, you know, he, nobody, nobody was, you know, we were expecting bombs out, you know, from, from Sanguine, but he could have planted that bomb anywhere, right? He could have planted a mission row. He could have planted at the hospital, mm -hmm. he could have planted at the courthouse. We chose to plant it at Polito. Am I sad about my sheriff's office being blown up? Yes, but in the end, the only person who got hurt was the guy who tried to defuse it. Have we asked Divine what he wants to do? Because I, I spoke mean... with him at length on the night of. It's it's not that simple. I mean. I think they're still good in his heart, but he's obviously been through a lot and he doesn't have any trust left for with the majority of PD. I mean, with PD as a whole, you know, as, as, yeah. as far as an organization, he trusts nobody in PD. It's after what Shelby did to him, he, he won't work with any of us for any reason. Personally, I think he trusts me and Tessa to some extent, mm -hmm. maybe Raven, maybe Malden, but um, he won't work with us anymore as a whole. I'm more on about the. Does he know he has a bomb in his head? Yeah, he told us. Right. So if we if we went into a room with Divine and we said we can get a surgeon, but there's only a ten percent chance you survive the surgery. Have we laid that out to him and given him the option to no, see if he wants? He, he we, we we tried to talk him into a medical exam. He thought. He tried to reach for Aurora's gun to enforce a standoff. Oh, God. He didn't. He doesn't want to go anywhere near any of that. It's just sad. You know, the, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not saying we as a me and you, but this is what we we've turned him into that. We've done that, Jim. I, don't know. I I guess if there's anything we can do, I think we should, but like, are we I guess there's another thing there is like are we how do we feel about pushing charges on someone who is you know, more than ever, we've got evidence that oh again maybe we don't have the evidence of the bomb. Um but we have reason to believe that he's literally being forced into doing these acts and we're still going to charge him. Yep. I mean, I am because the alternative is he goes out on the run or he's loose. And then he has to do what Jaeger wants. If he's out there, not in prison, he has to continue Jaeger's plans and actions. And he, he has to plant more bombs and, hurt more people, even if he can try to limit the amount of harm, there's still harm to come. While he's in prison, Jaeger can't force him to do much of anything, even if we don't believe that he truly deserves prison. Yeah. Wow, this sucks. Okay. <clears throat> I guess you didn't. I haven't even told you the best part yet. That's the best part. What's the best part? 
Um, I mean, aside from the bombing last night, um, all the terrorists inside are apparently very adamant that when they get out, T minus, what is it, 20 days or something, that they'll continue right where they left off with bombing, shootings, violence against PD. Oh, in the state. yeah. 100%. I expect you nothing less. I, I'll be honest. I kind I of, I kind of ex- to be honest, I kind of expected them to go back to their individual gangs and try to pick up the pieces of their lives. I didn't expect them to get out of prison for a 30 day, you know, jail sentence or 30 year jail sentence and go right back to the same thing that put them in there. I didn't expect that. Maybe I was naive. No, I don't think, I don't think you're naive. I don't know. It's one of these situations where we haven't really seen before where 50 people all have a common enemy. You know, sometimes we have a hell week here and there and everybody gets mad at the PD. But this is a much bigger scale than we've seen before. And they're just left to cook in there. And this, I don't think there's... I don't think they see each other as different gangs or anything in there anymore. They were just one group of people with one enemy, and that's us and the senator, and I guess if they want the EMS now, I don't know. Well, maybe the EMS are on their side from the way they see things as of last night. I mean, maybe. I mean, the best move that we could pull would be to get them to fight each other, but God knows how we're going to accomplish that without putting the center in one of their gangs. Or Brian. Can we maybe accuse Brian of joining BBMC? <laughs> I don't... I, listen, the, the less I have to do... Hold on, I got a huge twat coming up. I'm thinking, <laughs> no, Brian oh, Knight in a BBMC cut? <laughs> question mark? <laughs> I think that could really set them off each, against each other. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it, it Ryan just... Knight joined the Saints. <laughs> Holy shit, that's crazy! You know, something came came to me today, uh, actually, which might <sighs> apparently Marty Banks contacted Matt. Matt's obviously, you know, he's a criminal corporal now, so he contacted me, uh, saying that Marty Banks was going to contact me directly. Because he was willing to give up information on the other gangs so that he could get his boys out of prison. Okay. What's uh, he willing to give up? That's the thing. He hasn't contacted me. Um, he, he's According to Matt, he's only pretty genuine. Uh, but again, this is one of those situations where me and you or the DOJ are not actually going to be able to do anything because the Senate put them in with no due process or anything. So we can't really just pull them out, right? And even if we well, did... We could we could definitely go easy on them in terms of charges to get them out faster if he was willing to work. I mean, I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying we could drop charges on them or, you know insist that we want the bare minimum for sentencing guidelines or whatever if they're willing to give us actual concrete good information but that's a big if yeah that's the if and he hasn't contacted me either so yeah i mean it would have to be it would have to be insane for them to give up something i mean if you want to be real sinister about it you would leak that marty was willing to you know say anything at all and hopefully turn the rest of them on gulag gang but I mean, that's a whole morality right. question. Like, are we, are we doing what's right at that point anymore? If we're, yeah, I don't think so. But is it the greater good for to allow three different gangs to attack one gang instead of the entire state? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. What about um, what about this news thing? What's you think? What are you thinking about it? What did you fucking Doesn't seem to be the downside huh? so far. It seems like well, the thing that they wouldn't have access to otherwise. I appreciate you, man. It seems like if he's truly.